Not only are we uh, reducing Canada's emissions to the lowest level outside the pandemic, in 25 years, more kids across the country have full bellies as they start their school day. We will continue to fight climate change. After nine years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister's taxes, debt, inflation, and promises, Canadians are hungry. Literally, according to the Bank of Canada, the Food Bank's Canada report, 50% of Canadians say they're worse off than a year ago. 25% are in food insecurity, and a quarter of young adults went to a food bank in three months alone this year. Why is it that Canadians who can't feed themselves have to keep feeding his morbidly obese government? The right honourable Prime Minister. It would be slightly more credible to hear the Conservatives concerned about the challenges Canadians are facing if they hadn't stood and voted against uh, more spaces in childcare, voted against uh, our dental care program that two million seniors have signed up for and has now delivered close to a 100,000 uh, dental appointments for seniors in just 22 days, Mr. Speaker. Uh, they've also stood against our actual foods program that's going to help 400,000 more kids across the country have full bellies as they start their school day. These are investments that they're opposed to, that we are there to help Canadians with. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, it's a school food program that has not served a single solitary meal, even though it was promised three years ago. What he's feeding is bureaucracy, not children. And if all of his spending were working, then why is it that Food Banks Canada reports today that 25% of young adults had to go to a food bank in three months alone, and two million Canadians are lined up every month? Mr. Speaker, with so many empty stomachs, isn't it just a little bit wacko to be raising carbon taxes on farmers and food? Yeah. Yeah. Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we announced the National Food School Program in the budget and just after question period today, the Conservatives have an opportunity to vote in favour of the National Food School Program. Other initiatives that are going to help hundreds of thousands of kids across this country and indeed millions of Canadians with the high cost of living. But he is going to stand there and vote against it, Mr. Speaker, to prevent it from developing, delivering the health Canadians need. We will keep going on delivering support for Canadians and we will keep going on putting more money in the pockets of 8 out of 10 Canadians with our price on pollution that supports Canadian families and successfully fights climate change. Here, here. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. He's been making exactly the same promises for nine long years, long, and yet long. his NDP Liberal government has doubled housing costs, doubled the debt, increased the size of the bureaucracy by 50%. Now he wants to quadruple the carbon tax, all to deliver two million people to a food bank every single month. Mr. Speaker, if government programs were really going to solve the problem he caused, then why are Canadians so hungry? Yeah. It costs literally tens of thousands of dollars for many individual farmers, all of which gets passed on. But the Prime Minister, instead of defending his taxes, resorted to a really wacko and unhinged claim that if Canadians just paid more taxes, there would be suddenly less fires. I thought that water and not taxes put out fires. But maybe the Prime Minister can clarify, how high would his tax have to go for forest fires to stop? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Canadians are facing the impacts on the extreme weather events that come from climate change that are unfortunately getting worse and worse every year. That is why our government from uh, from 2015 onwards has stepped up in the fight against climate change, because not only are we uh, reducing Canada's emissions to the lowest level outside the pandemic in 25 years, but we're also stepping up in the jobs and technological innovations that the world needs to successfully fight climate change. We will continue to fight climate change, Mr. Speaker, and put more money in people's pockets while he sits with his arms crossed and still playing. 
the Honorable Leader of the Opposition. He didn't answer my question. You know, now he says that his taxes are going to make Canada a high-tech wonderland. Um, before his claim was that it was going to stop forest fires. It's him that made the link, not me. Obviously, I think the link between the two is absolutely ridiculous because his tax is not an environmental plan. It's a money collecting plan. It's a plan of government greed. So I'll ask the question again. He wants to hike the tax to 61 cents a litre. If it gets to that high and people are all starving in the streets, will that stop the forest fires? <laughs> The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaking in the Leader of the Opposition's desire to make clever rhetorical points, he actually completely ignored the basic facts. The price on pollution is revenue neutral for the federal government. That means the money that comes in for the price on pollution for the carbon tax gets returned to the jurisdictions. That is why the parliamentary budget officer found 8 out of 10 Canadian families in jurisdictions where the carbon price applies do better with the Canada carbon rebate that comes in four times a year than the price on pollution costs them. That's a plan to fight climate change and put money in people's pockets.